Good evening, everyone, and welcome to week one of the Ohio High School State football playoffs. Tonight, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs welcome in the Black River Pirates. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Scott Nurse and our entire WSN crew. And Scott, we take a look at both of these teams. It's kind of like the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. You've got Black River with four backs of over 200 yards each. They've got three receivers with 500 yards. And then you've got Columbus Grove with three fantastic linebackers and a great defense. Yeah, I think that's going to be a key matchup tonight, that Columbus Grove defense against that Black River offense. But I think... Uh, you know, both teams are very well balanced, so who knows what we're going to see tonight. Yeah, let's take a look at the keys to the game, Scott. Okay, I've got three keys. Number one, be ready. Black River scored far more points in the second half all year than in the first half, and they started 0-4, and, and they finished 6-4. Columbus Grove has scored 90 points in the first quarters of this year. The Bulldogs want to start fast and attack the Black River defense. The Pirates need to be ready and know their defensive assignments. They can't start slow. If Columbus Grove grabs some momentum early, look out. Number two, execution in all three phases. To advance into playoffs, you got to execute in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. Both teams are very well balanced between the pass and run game. Their stats are almost identical, especially defensively. You must lock in and play assignment football. If you don't execute in all phases of the game, it'll cost you. Can't relax, not even for one play. And number three, mental toughness. Be physical. No turnovers, no penalties, no missed assignments, no lapses in concentration. You won't advance unless you're an excellent football team. And it won't be easy. And you probably won't be able to do what you normally would. you got to stay tough and wait for the moment and do your job. This may come down to one play that sparks a team you got to stay alert and fully engaged on every single play. Thank you, Scott. There you have it. It's week one of the state playoffs. It's Black River. It's Columbus Grove. It's right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Climber Stadium. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hucker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at HuckerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. Scott Nurse, week one of the high school football playoff season. No better time of the year. Now, I'll say when basketball season rolls around, no better time of the year, but I say it all the time. <laughs> right, right. No, it is a great time of the year. Lots of hopes, uh, you know, lots of... Uh, you know, high hopes for the remainder of the season. And uh, unfortunately, at the end of tonight's game, one team goes home. Their Abs season ends. Absolutely. Let's take a look at our officials for tonight. Yeah, our officials tonight, the referee is Chad Snyder. The, the umpire is Zach Metzger. Headlinesman is Sean Abbott. The line judge is Chase Hatfield. And the back judge is Brandon Politnik. So Black River, they won the toss, and they will kick off to Columbus Grove. Take a look at the Black River Pirates. They're the visiting team. They come in at 6-4, six 6-1 and four, six and one in the Lorraine County League. Started out the year 0-4, Scott, and they've won six in a row. Yeah, they, they've been on a hot streak as of late, no question about it. Uh, started slow, and I mentioned that kind of as one of our keys yes, in yes, the game. Yes, yes, you did. They, they, they start slow in their games. They started slow in their season, but they finished strong. So, uh you know, you got to be ready. Well, somebody asked me earlier today, what, what's Black River's offensive prowess? And I said, look, they sling the ball around, they run the ball, they do a lot of everything. everything. Yeah, they're very well balanced. And they're well balanced amongst the running backs. You mentioned they got four running backs, all with 200 plus yards. Yeah. And look, in Columbus Grove, everybody in the area knows the story. What, what a program they got over here. Uh, eight and two this year, uh, six and one in the NWC. Only loss was the league champion, Allen East, seven and nothing. Uh, they have got a great young quarterback in Brenton Renner, and Trenton Barraza runs the ball as well as anybody in the area. They've got great wide receivers. But listen, everybody talks about the defense from Columbus Grove. Yeah, their defense is fantastic. They had a number of guys that were on the first and second and honorable mention all conference defensive team so they uh they're loaded so we got a great game tonight danny hilbert scott nurse from climber stadium here in columbus grove week one of the high school football playoffs and we are just about set eric grosser quarterback and <laughs> kicking <laughs> yeah, specialist that's right number five we're gonna be talking about, yeah we're gonna talk about him a lot tonight scott so we are underway from columbus grove the kick is taken right at the goal line grove will bring it up shep hawker with the ball He's going to get to about the 25-yard line. That's where they'll take over. 
Grove Bulldogs will be led on the field by quarterback Brenton Renner, 71 of 129 for 985 yards and five touchdowns. And he's got his number one running back in the backfield with him, Trenton Barraza. Trenton Barraza has 149 attempts for 1,100 yards, Scott, and 11 touchdowns. Yeah, just to uh, give credit a little bit there, Shep Hawker on that return, number 20, averages 24 yards per <laughs> kickoff return. Here comes Renner in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to Barraza. Here comes Barraza off the right side. He's going to get a gain of about four or five yards. And, Scott, they'll take that every time with Trent Barraza. Yeah, you're, no question. Um, he came into the game, as you mentioned, 1,126 yards, 149 attempts, 11 touchdowns, and he averages 7.6. <laughs> per carry. That's a pretty good option. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it, Scott? Yeah. That's pretty good. So here we go at second and four from the 31. Renner's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Barraz again. He goes off the left side, spins around. He's going to pick up the first down and watch that young man go. You know, I've had the opportunity to see Columbus Grove a couple times this year, and, and, and the thing about him that's really impressive is you never seem to get a clean hit and he's able to spin, he's able to use your momentum against you, as you just saw there on a couple spin moves. He'll absorb the hit, spin away from it, and continue on downfield. Tackles by number 57, Shane Davis, the senior defensive lineman. Here's Renner, he's gonna throw the ball out into the flat. This is Barraza, trying to get him out in space. He's gonna get up to the 40, and that's where he'll be taken down. So they'll, they'll utilize uh, Barraza in space when they get him out there, as they do with all their athletes. Yeah, he's got 143 yards receiving coming into the game to uh, complement his rushing attack and a touchdown. Averages seven yards a catch. Trent, Trenton Barraza. Here comes Renner. He's in the gun. He's got Barraza into his back. He's got one to the right, two to the left. He'll hand the ball to Barraza right at the middle. There goes Trenton Barraza up the middle. He's loose. He gets across midfield. He's taken down at the 35, and there you see the explosiveness of that young man. Yeah, he's taken down by number two, Tyler Mercusic. We were pronouncing names from the uh, Black River uh, <laughs> yeah. coaching staff helping us out with some of their names. So, Yeah, they're not uh, you know, a team from our area. You mentioned about sure. a two, two-and-a-half-hour drive to get here up in the Cleveland area. Uh, so, Yeah, and here comes Barraza again off the left side. He's loose again. Boy, a big hit that time by number 34, Blake Hopkins. Junior linebacker slash running back. Just puts a hit on him hard, man. Yeah, Blake Hopkins comes into the game. He's their leading tackler. He's got 119 tackles this year, and he's got uh, 13 of those tackles for loss. And that was form tackling, Scott. He had yes. his head up, and he had a nice open field tackle. So here comes Renner and the Bulldogs. He's second and eight from the 33. Renner's in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand the ball up to the first man through. There he goes across the middle, and there's a flag thrown on the play, and this is number seven for the Bulldogs. This is A.J. Schaefer, the senior 6'1", 225-pound running back. A.J. Schaefer with 302 yards, eight touchdowns, averages six yards a carry, Maybe just that, under six yeah. yards a carry. That young man knows how to find the end zone, so they'll bring this one back as a hold on the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. So mistakes will play a part tonight. Uh, both these teams pretty mistake-free through the year. Uh, Grove very disciplined in their uh, attack. Yeah, I was looking at uh, something today, and then and, and Grove um, – has committed surprisingly very few yes. <laughs> penalties. Um, I mean, it's really kind of impressive. That'll bring up second and eight from the 42. Runners in the gun. He's got Barraza to his left. He's got two to the left and one to the right, spread out wide. Here comes Renners. He looks across the field. He throws back to his left. He's got a man out there across the middle. He takes the ball up the middle, and he goes to about the 31-yard line. Number six on the catch, Zach Reynolds. The 6'1", 175-pound junior catches the ball. Zach comes into the game, 340 yards, one touchdown, averages 14.8 per catch. And you can see that Brenton Renner is already, uh, I believe, two for two. Yes, he is. <coughs> Excuse me. Here comes Renner again. He's going to hand the ball up to A.J. Schaefer. He goes off the left side. Oh, he was just about get, <laughs> taken down by number eight from Black River, Kenny Boggs. Got him by the ankles or he would have went into the end zone. You know, Schaefer and Barraza, what a, what a great tandem they are in the backfield. And they complement each other well. They're both strong runners, but Schaefer's more of a power back, whereas uh, Barraza is kind of a slippery do-it-all yeah. kind of back. God, I was watching these guys uh, during warm-ups. They've got some really big physical kids for this Grove Bulldog team. 
There's Renner in the gun. He's going to look across the field. He's got a man to the left. He's got him spotted. That's Barraza taken down, but a nice pitching catch for Trenton Barraza. Yeah, we mentioned Brenton Renner, excellent quarterback, came into the game with 984 yards, five touchdowns. Um, just an excellent quarterback. Manages his throwing very well. You can see nice delivery there. Yeah, right that, that, yeah that offensive line's giving him all kinds of time too. Absolutely. Here comes Schaefer again. He goes off the right side. He picks up about four yards. And they are doing a great job, Scott, of mixing and matching the pass and the run. Yeah, they are. It's just, uh, you know, it's what they do. They, they, they mix it up nicely. And the Black River Pirates out of Lorain County, they give up 24 points a game. Uh, part of the problem with their four losses is they gave up quite a few points. They only averaged 25 a game. And the Grove Bulldogs consequently give up 9.8 a game. So we've talked about that defense a lot tonight. So here's Renner in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer to his left. Renner's going to throw to the right. He's got a man out there, and he overshoots. His intended target was Trenton Barraza. And, boy, he was wide open, Scott. Yeah, he was open, but, you know, that's, that, that's a sign of a good quarterback. If you're going to miss, you want to miss long and to the outside because the defensive backs typically are on the short side and they're on the inside of the receiver. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a good safe pass here. That's a great replay. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union yeah. Bank committed to you. So here comes Renner. He's got Schaefer in the backfield with him. He's in the gun. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's going to hand to Schaefer up the middle. There goes Schaefer taken down right near the goal line, about the two-yard line. Yeah, he's going to be pretty close to the first down. I think and that, they, yep, you're right, Scott. That is another it. first down. Our first down sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decker Stamping and Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale, go ahead. Let's give those uh, offensive linemen for Grove Absolutely. A, uh, a little props here. Tad Koch at the left tackle, Kyle Lathrop at left guard, Kylan Mays at center, Loudon Ockmuty at right guard, and right tackle is Ethan Johnson. And there's Renners. He keeps it himself, and he gets closer to the goal line. And you're right, Scott. That offensive line is getting a great push on the ball. And right now, that's the story of the game is the offensive line from Grove is owning the line of scrimmage. Yeah, well, they've got size. You mentioned it earlier. Oh. They've got size on the line, size in the backfield. They really have uh, quite a bit of size well, differential. You know, Scott, in a game like this where you're playing an unfamiliar foe who you've never played, and I don't know there's any history between these schools, you, you do want to flex your muscles a little bit. You want to show some, you know, some size and some physicality. Absolutely. And that's, uh, you know, that's one of the keys to the game. Absolutely. Coach You're right. Schaefer yep. said, be physical. Yep. There's Renner. He's going to hand the ball to Schaefer. And Schaefer walks in untouched for a Columbus Grove touchdown. A.J. Schaefer, the big tailback, just waltzes into the end zone. And he gives the Grove Bulldogs the 6-0 lead. That's his ninth of the year. That's a big kid to take down. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and what a way to go, you know, on your first drive, yes. open the playoffs, the the whole, you know, playoff new sure. season, sure. and you open it up with a drive, good mix of pass and run, move the ball down the field, a little penalty, set you back, yep. but you end Didn't up scoring. Didn't face him, did it? Yeah. Nope. So here's the point after try. Snap is back, hold is good, and the kick is up, and it is good. So after the first drive of the game, 6.06 to go, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead the Black River Pirates 7-0 right here on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Union Bank is our replay sponsor. Yeah, I want to give a little credit to Shep Hawker who made that extra point. Yes. He's now 32 of 34 on the year, which is about 95%. What? That's Scott. pretty good in high school. And, yeah. And, and I mean, that's really good in high school. What do they do up here with kickers? It, I mean, it's a tradition like it's unbelievable. I mean, yeah. The last kid's starting at Marshall right now. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, Black River kicked it off to Grove, uh, and they fielded yes. it on the goal line. Yeah. It, it's, it's amazing to me that high school kickers are kicking the football to the goal line and into the end zone. That's a great point. The, the, the evolution of high school kickers has become unbelievably good. Yes. Yeah. So here's Columbus Grove. They're going to kick off the Black River. We've taken it about the five-yard line. Here comes the Pirates on their first possession. This is number two for the Pirates. That's Tyler McCusick. How do you say that again, Scott? McCusick. 
I believe it's McCusick. McCusick. McCusick, the 5'11 senior. So here come the Black River Pirates. They'll be led on offense by number five quarterback Eric Grosser, the six foot, 190 pound junior. He's 90 of 165, 1,582 yards, 14 touchdowns, and only four interceptions, Scott. That young man takes care of the football. Yes, he does. And he's successful, obviously, with uh, almost 1,500 yards. And he'll have Blake Hopkins in the backfield with him. We've already talked about him on defense. 5'11, 165 pound junior, has 590 yards and 11 touchdowns but they will rotate backs in like you've never seen before. As I said in the pregame, they've got four backs with 200 or plus yards. So here's Grosser in the gun. He's got four receivers to the right. He's gonna throw off to the right. This reception's made, and he's taken down at about the 30 yard line. The reception was made by 34, that's Blake Hopkins. Yeah, for Blake, at, uh, he, he came into the game 465 yards, that's his 33rd reception averages 14 and a half a catch and he's got four touchdowns receiving the football so yeah we're you're going to hear his name a lot he's outstanding on the defensive side of the football outstanding on the offensive side as well grocer in the gun he's going to was going to throw to his right he's going to keep it himself he's going to come left he's at the 30 he's at the 35 to the 40 to the 45 and taken out of bounds at about midfield so a great run by grocer and that's got the black river community fired up well and you mentioned good decision making yes. right yes it, it looked like he was going to throw the football to the that's right point. it was well covered he he chose then to tuck it run get what he could and uh got a lot do you think that was a design play, or he just did that on his own? Because that was pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it could have been a design play because he had some blockers out there as well. So here's Grosser. He's in the gun. He's got Hopkins to his left. He's got trips to the right. He's got a single receiver off to the left side. There goes a man in motion. They're going to hand the ball off to number two. That's Tyler McCusick. He goes over the 50, taken down at about the 45-yard line. So a nice play, a little jet sweep there by the Pirates. Yeah, Tyler McCusick averages 8.9 yards per carry, so excellent running back. He's one of those four in the stable. He leads them in per carry average. Now they've got a bunch of them in the stable, as we said earlier. They'll, they'll run four backs, five backs. Uh, and you saw the first play of the game. They went quads to the right, Scott. Four receivers to the right. So here comes Grosser in the backfield. He's got a single setback. He's got three to his right. He's got one in the slot. He's going to throw off the left side. He's got his receiver out there, and a nice pitching catch, and a gain of about 25. That's number two, Tyler McCusick. Yeah, you better learn his name because it sounds <laughs> like we're going to be pronouncing it quite a bit tonight. You get a good look at him right there. Great hands, great throw, put it right where it had to be. Well, I love the design of the play, Scott. They overloaded the entire right side. They come back to the left side. They've got single coverage on the left side, and before any linebackers come up, he's got 10 yards. Yeah, no, and I like the slant in high school football because it shortens the pass. you got a lot greater chance for success. Here's McCusick in motion. Here comes Grosser with the ball. They're going to hand the ball to McCusick again. He goes across. He gets 10. He's got 15. He's got about 17 yards. And, boy, the Columbus Grove defense has got to figure that out because that's two plays in about 35 yards. And that's going to bring up another first down, another Dales Concrete first down. Yeah, we mentioned Columbus Grove. Excellent defense. Um, defensive backs, though, for Grove, uh, both of them, all conference, excellent defensive backs. So I think, uh, you know, that's one of the sure. things that if Black River scouted Columbus Grove at all, they saw that. And, sure. And uh, you know, they want to complete those short passes if they're going to throw, like you see here. There's a great job by number 13 for the Grove Bulldogs, Antonio Gray, as he was Johnny on the spot. He hit Seth Gaspari with a quick slant, and he was taken down for about no gain there. Yeah, Gray comes in with 37 total tackles on the year, 19 assisted and 17 solos. You know, Scott, we talked a little bit about the Grove offensive line and the Black River offensive line is doing a great job. Now, their slant patterns and they're getting the ball out quick. I gave a lot of credit to Grocer, but that offensive line is doing a nice job. Yeah, size is nice, no question about sure. it. And, and over the course of a game, a size can really wear you down. But I think in high school football, technique and, and, oh, absolutely. and, and responsibility, knowing your assignment, and executing that assignment can be just as effective. Here goes McCursick in motion. They're going to fake the handoff to him, and Grosser's going to be taken down very quick by that Grove defense. Big number 52 for the Bulldogs, and that's Kylan Mays, yeah, let's sophomore. Give, let's give the uh, offensive line for Black River a little, yes. a little props, too. Jonathan McKean is their tight end, number 83. Number 70 is Nick Kramowski. He's the tackle. Owen Chapman is the guard. Lucas Steinbrenner is the center. 
The other guard is R.J. Bentley, and the tackle is Zion Griffin. So the first big play of the game, the third and 12 from the 16-yard line. So a big third down here for the Grove defense and for the Black River offense. Here's Grosser in the gun. He's got Hopkins to his right. He's going to roll left. He's looking downfield under heavy pressure. Here comes the – he's going to throw to the end zone. He's got a man that overshoots him in the back of the end zone. Intended target was number seven, Nathan Urbis. The six-foot, 180-pound senior was in the, back or in the back of the end zone all alone, but he overshoots him. Yeah, an excellent coverage by Shep Hawker. Shep Hawker is a first-team all-conference defensive back, and you see him at work there. So here comes Black River as they will attempt a field goal. And take a look at who their kicker is. <laughs> Number five, the quarterback. That is Eric Grosser. He does it all for this team. Yeah, he kicks and punts and kicks off. For the year, he is um, two of six field goals attempted and made. And now you're going to get an offside call on the Grove Bulldogs at fourth and 12. That will move the ball up. And I wonder if they'll change their decision here going up to the about the 11-yard line. So they'll be in the, uh, you know, Let's see what they decide. Yeah, it's a little bit longer than the uh, extra point, but it's definitely makeable. Well, Scott, we haven't even mentioned it yet, but we have another beautiful night for high school football here in Northwest Ohio. Beautiful temperatures. It's a little chilly out here, but nothing. <laughs> you know, it's mid-50s, and it's just gorgeous out well, here. Yeah, and, we, you know, we're a couple days from November. I know, it's and amazing. It's, uh, it, it, it's wonderful. Today it was at 60 degrees. It was Beautiful. Absolutely. So here comes Eric Grosser from about 28 yards out here. Kick is up, and it is good. So Eric Grosser puts the Black River Pirates on the scoreboard with a 28-yard field goal with 2.16 to remain in the, game, in the first quarter. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead 7-3. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete. With all Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lip sync for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale's Concrete is our first down sponsor. So, wow, what a response, to Scott, from the Black River Pirates. Showed no fear in that drive. Now it was only a field goal, but still established the run and the pass and got their points. They responded. They moved the ball down the field. They mixed it up with the pass and run game. They came down a little short of the goal line, didn't get a touchdown, but they got the three points. So, uh, yeah, good yeah. response. Absolutely. Season 18 of the Sports Report is underway. More highlights, scores, and stories that matter to only on the Sports Report. Fridays at 10 p.m. on TV 44. We try to catch the Sports Report every Friday night. Sometimes they put us on there, Scott. I know. I know. <laughs> so here's Grosser again will kick off. He's kicked off. He's kicked a field goal. He's thrown. He's run. He's done quite a bit for the Black River Pirates. Nice deep kick there. Puts him into the end zone. He's going to bring it out. So here comes the Bulldogs as they bring it out of the end zone. And a great tackle there by number eight, Kenny Boggs. We've already called his name a couple times tonight, but he upends. Let's see who that was for Grove. Number 20 for the Bulldogs. That's Shep. Shep Hawker, their leading receiver. Yeah, and they held him, as I mentioned, he averages 24 yards on kick return. So uh, for him to be corralled inside the 20, is uh, excellent coverage by the Black River Pir now, Pirates. Scott, I say that it was great that they got that three down there, but if Columbus Grove comes back with another touchdown, boy, that really puts you in a hole. Yeah, it does. It does. So here comes Renner in the gun. He's got Barraza to his right. He's going to hand the ball off to Barraza. There goes Barraza right up the middle. Wow, is he quick. He gets to the 35 in no time flat. Did you see how quick he got through that? You and I could have went through that hole. He was at full speed in the second step. You just wonder, Scott, with this being a grass field and the temperatures are dropping a little bit, if it's going to be a little slippery out there by the end of the game. Yeah, it, it usually just after dark, about now, when it's a little cooler, you're going to yes. get a little dew settle. It yep. might slip up a little bit. But, uh, you know, I love this stadium. It's oh, one of the few great. stadiums around that's still natural grass. Yep, absolutely. Everybody's going to turf, and, uh, you know, I, I really like this. Well, the whole facility out here is fantastic. All, all the athletic facilities at Columbus Grove are, are first, not, are first, you know, first class. So. A lot of history here. There a lot of absolutely. nostalgia here. Yeah, sure is. I played, uh, when I was in high school, we played a lot of high school games over here. So, looks like we got a uh, flag on the play. 
Well, let's see if we can't get this call here. You see the uh, official with the ball. That's Zach Metzger, that's one of my the, fellow uh, basketball right. officials. Oh, there you go. He's uh, working double duty, yeah, football and basketball. Yeah, he says uh, <laughs> he says he's going all the way to the state semis this year. That's great. So that's he, must, he must do a great job. Yes. Here's Renner oh. with Barraza in the backfield. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand off to the man in motion. This is Barraza himself. Excuse me, I said Barraza was in the backfield. He had A.J. Schaefer in the backfield. Barraza was the man in motion. Boy, they put him in all kinds of situations to get him in space, don't they, Scott? Well, it's a sign of a good coaching. You know, it, it, they find a way to get him the ball, whether it's passing it to him, whether you get a little jet sweep action here, or whether you come straight out of the backfield. They, they find ways to get him the ball because he's a playmaker. Yes, tackle was made by Nathan Urbis, and we keep calling the same guys again. And that, They're uh, ball hawks on defense, Nathan Urbis and Kenny Boggs. So here's Renner again. He's going to hand the ball off to number 20. This is Shep Hawker. As he gets around the left side, and he is gone up the middle, and he is going to score another Columbus Grove touchdown. That was quick, but there is a flag on the play, and that one's coming back, it looks like to me. Well, I mentioned yep. Shep Hawker is first team All-Northwest Conference defensively. He's also first team All-Northwest Conference offensively. Yeah. So he, he plays on both sides of the football. It's a shame this one has to come back. Yeah. But going to get another holding call. And that's two holding calls against the Grove offensive line. But that one's going to be costly. Yeah, just a big play there that comes back, gives Black River a little bit of life. Because as you mentioned, Columbus Grove scores on that play. It really yeah. sets a dagger because sure now you're does. down you know, down, down 10, maybe 11 points. Sure, sure. So there's a holding call against the Columbus Grove offensive line. That's going to take the ball back to about the 30, 35-yard line there. About the, excuse me, the 37-yard line. So here come the dogs on offense. There's Renner in the gun. He's got Barraza to his left. He's got two to the right. He's got a single receiver to his left. He's going to hand the ball to Barraza. Barraza goes up the middle. Well, he was hit immediately at the line of scrimmage and a great tackle by number 34 for Black River. And that's Blake Hopkins. Yeah, I mentioned he's their leading tackler. They've got him right in the center of their defense, and, and uh, he, he responds accordingly. He's in on almost every tackle. So that'll bring up second and 17 from the 40 due to the penalty. Here's Renner in the gun with Barraza to his right. The high snap. He throws it out to his left. And find the completion out here. He gets to the 40, almost to the 50, taken out of bounds. And that's number 20 for the Bulldogs, Shep Hawker. Yeah, he almost made his way to the track there. Yes, he did. I think, think he got tripped up once he kind of got out of bounds. Nice move here. Good little stiff arm and a second stiff arm here and yeah, he absorbs hit. the hit and lost <laughs> his balance. He got hit hard, but it was a legal hit. It yeah. was in bounds. Uh, good crowd on hand tonight here, the Bulldogs. Late arriving crowd, but they filled up their side. <laughs> yeah, it did fill in pretty nicely. We were talking about that. We were kind of worried there for a little bit. Here's Renner. He looks across the defense. He's under heavy pursuit. He gets the ball out. His intended target was Trenton Barraza, and he throws off of his hands, and he had him wide open and just a little too hard. Yeah, you know, speaking of the crowd, a lot of times at, at you know, playoffs they'll have a kickoff event. A lot yes. of the parents and everyone are, you know, maybe over at the school or at the school parking lot or having some sort of a meal or event before the game. And we, we were a little worried. The crowd was a little <laughs> no, was thin. And not many people here. Right, right about game time, they all they just filled in. They, yeah, you're right. They were, they were tailgating, I'm sure. So the Columbus Grove Bulldogs will have to punt it away on fourth and nine from the 48. This is number nine for the dogs, so Mitchell Ellerbrock. This is huge for Black oh, River absolutely. because they gave up a, a touchdown that was called back for holding, and now they've held uh, Grove and get the football back. And a nice pump by Ellerbrock as he sends it to about the 21-yard line. That's where the Pirates will take over. With 15 seconds to go here in the first first quarter, Grove leading 7-3. to three. So, yeah, Scott, you're right. That is a huge win for the Black River Pirates defense as they bend but don't break. Now, they gave up a touchdown, but it was called back. So, hey, no touchdown. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that's that mental toughness that we talked sure. about uh, at the top there is you got to be able to rise and overcome those adverse situations or those mistakes or, or that touchdown. Sure, sure. And, and put it out of your mind and say, okay, it was called back. Let's respond defensively, and Black River has. 
And you wonder what uh, was going through the minds of the uh, the young Bulldogs as that touchdown comes back, and uh, they end up having to punt the ball, not the offensive succession they wanted. Yeah, key play on that was uh, when Blake Hopkins really got a good stick on Trenton Barraza and stopped him short. I think it was on yes, second yeah, down. Yes, yes, you're right. And it kind of put him behind the chains. You can check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. I'll be checking the WSN app tonight for all the games. I can promise you that. We are so fortunate we oh, have this in goodness. our area. Absolutely. So here's Grocer with the toss out to the right side. As his man's taken down at about the 30-yard the line as he tries to get up and get out of the way. Yeah, number six, Zach Reynolds was coming in there like a missile. <laughs> Zach so Reynolds is a quality football yeah. player. He is very good. Well, he's a uh, two-time letterman Yes, working on his third. <laughs> and that's going to end the first quarter. After one quarter from Climber Stadium, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead the Black River Pirates 7-3 right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Hawker Drywall is our scoreboard sponsor. So not a lot of lights going off on the scoreboard right now, Scott. Seven to three, kind of a defensive battle. Yeah, and, and you know, part of that is, um, you know, trying to figure out what you want to do. Yes, Coaches yes. seeing what, uh, what they want to do live. You know, you can watch film and, and do all that kind of stuff and scout, but, but until you see it live, you got to kind of figure it out. Defense, defense is always there, right? Yes. It, or it should be. Uh, and so offensively, coaches are just trying to figure out what they want to do that's going to be successful. So here's Grocer as he tosses the ball out again to his, his receiver, and he is going to be taken down for a loss. And that intended target was Tyler McCusack. We talked about him quite a bit tonight, but that play went nowhere, sniffed out quickly by the Grove defense. Yeah, A.J. Schaefer first to arrive there. So, Scott, that's going to push him back to third and 15. And uh, really, when you're at third and 15, you become predictable when you don't do something on first down and you get yourself behind the chains. Well, yeah, you, you, you definitely don't want to do that. It takes away that ability to be balanced, to run the football. Absolutely. So, here's Grocer in the gun at third and 15 from the 21-yard line. Grove Corners pressed up coverage. Sort of backing off now. Here comes Grocer as he rolls to his right. Under heavy pressure, looks downfield. He throws one way down the right side. He's got oh, a man. man out there, and that's caught by number eight, Kenny Boggs. And that play went from desperation to hero. Well, that's only his fifth catch on the year. He averages 10 and a half per catch. He's got only 42 yards coming in. But, um, you know, nice job there by Grocer to – wait for his block and kind of cut inside to give him a little more time. He puts it right where it needs to be. Big gain for the Black How valuable, River. Scott, is it to have a quarterback that extend a play? That's exactly what he did. Yeah, well, the kid's an athlete, no question about it. There's McCusack on the jet sweep as he goes around the left side. He's taken down for a gain of about three yards. Number 14 on the hit for the Bulldogs. That's Landon Schrader. Well, Andy Schaefer told us that one of the keys to the game is their quarterback. He's an athlete, he's very and he good. does it all. He, he's kicked a field goal. He kicks off. He's the quarterback. He can run it. He can throw. He does it all. So you really got to focus your defense on him, and, and, and he's had two plays yes. here in a row where he's been a difference maker. And you see what he does. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decker Stamping and Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Second and eight from the 40-yard line. Here's Grocer as he throws the ball out to McCusack again. McCusack goes across the 40, taken down by number, number 13. Well, we've got a coach up here in the box that's uh, – <laughs> you might have heard him on the broadcast. He's, uh, He's a, little excited. a little animated. Yeah. It's interesting to me uh, – Danny, we got uh, number two, Tyler Mercusic, a lot more involved than what the stats and the yes, information yes. is coming into this game. They've been getting him the ball, so the coaches must have seen something they like with that matchup or trying to get him in, involved in the offense. Yeah, he was, he was really not one of my key players that I've wrote down on my notes, uh, Scott, so you're exactly right. They, they found something that they really – a matchup that they like. 
So here's Grosser in the gun. He's going to throw deep down the left side. He's got his man out there. And what a great defensive play by Trenton Barraza. What an athlete that young man is. Well, and I talked about it earlier. These uh, defensive backs for Grove are, are just outstanding, period. That's all you can say. They're just outstanding. And what we thought was going to be a shootout right now is turning into a defensive chess match. And both teams doing an extraordinary job on the defensive side. So that will bring up fourth and eight. And the Pirates are going to go for it. So here's Grosser in the gun. Under heavy pressure, he's going to throw it up on the right side. And a reception is made by number seven. What a reception. Nathan Urbus, and he is just finding the open man all night long. Yeah, Nathan Urbis is their number one receiver, came in with 511 yards, averages 20.4 a catch, and has six touchdowns. And you can see Grosser was just about to be hit in the back and gets rid of it. And Urbis goes up and high points the football, makes the catch. Huge play for Black River. And Antonio Gray really defended it well, but he kind of jumped a little early. So here comes Grosser and the Pirates as they look to take the lead here. He's going to pitch the ball off to number 34, taken down for about a two-yard gain. Number 34, that's Blake Hopkins. We've highlighted him quite a bit tonight. He is their lead back. Comes into the game with 590 yards and 11 touchdowns. Yeah, this looks like a basketball play it does. right here. Yes, it does. A basketball pass on the reverse. Grocer just gets it to him quick, and uh, Grove does a nice job of closing. Number six for the dog, Zach Reynolds, came in and uh, looked like he had an awkward play there where they went helmet to helmet to – just hope everybody's okay on that play, but they both jump up and uh, get back into play. So that'll bring up second nine from the 12-yard line. Grocer's in the backfield. He's got Hopkins off to his left. He's going to fake the ball to McCusack, and he's going to bring it himself, and he's going to be taken down. And a nice defensive play by number 61 for the Dogs, and that is Dylan Bryan, the six-foot senior. Yeah, number 13, Antonio Gray was in on that as well. Senior 5'10", 155 pounds. Watch him get the low hit there, number 13. Nice form tackle. You can tell they've been well coached. Absolutely. It's going to bring up third and 11. 8.04 to go here in the first half. You know, we talked about a lot of the tradition of the stadium. You know, for many years, every time Grove scored a touchdown, they would blow this, what it sounded yes. like a semi-horn. Yes, you know, yes. it's, it's, it was so loud and haven't heard that lately. <laughs> Here's Grosser think, in the gun. I think they retired it. <laughs> it is picked oh, off. Picked. picked off at the 10-yard line. Grove Bulldogs will bring it down the sideline. Number he's 13, gone. Antonio Gray. He's got one man to beat. He cuts back in, and he's going to take it to distance. Are you kidding me? Antonio Gray, and we've got a flag way down the field. Oh, my. So let's see what that's all about. But it was nowhere near the play, Scott, so you just wonder what that flag was for. No, the flag is laying about the 15-yard line on the opposite side of the field, so I'm not sure what that flag is. The officials are going to talk about it. So if this is against Columbus Grove, that'll be the second touchdown taken away from them, but an outstanding play. Illegal shift, it looks like to me, is what they're calling. Illegal shift, and they're going to call it against Black River, so that touchdown will stand. And it, I don't know if he did not get enough behind the pass because there was no receiver around Antonio Gray. Yeah, I don't know, just a good read by Antonio Gray, though, to step into that passing lane. We're going to get a look at it right now. Here's Grosser as he rolls right. He was rushed a little he bit. He was. And threw it short. Looks like short. It was supposed to go to number two, Tyler McCusick. McCusick. Yeah. And Gray picks it up. I really like this cutback here. He switches the football into the other arm to protect it. There's the kick, and it is good. With 7.28 to go, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs on top, 14-3. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Union Bank is our replay sponsor. So, Scott, it's unbelievable. Whoever you talk about, it seems like they make a big play, and you've been touting the defensive backs for Columbus Grove, and that's the biggest play of the game so far. Well, I looked at the Northwest Conference <laughs> leaderboard and in interceptions, Yes. and there's like six names <laughs> on there. They're literally right. all over, and, and actually, um, you, you know, they're just an excellent group. They work well together. They're well coached, obviously. So you're and, just uh, looking at analytics. You, you didn't have a premonition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's but, good stuff. You know, and they're filled with athletes. So. Oh, absolutely. You know, you, you look at Columbus Grove's defense, they give up less than 100 yards rushing to the opposition, and they give up less than 113 yards passing. I mean, that that's yeah. that's big-time stuff. Well, and if your offense can't score for you, right. Columbus Grove, right. let, let's pick it up on defense and get a score. So well, you're absolutely pretty right. Pretty impressive here. So here's the kickoff to Black River. They'll field the ball at the five-yard line. This is number two. Cusack, he brings the ball up the right side, and he finds the seam, and he gets to about the 48-yard line in a great return by Tyler McCusick. Yeah, that's only his second return of the year. He had a five-yard return the first time. and Yeah. Take a look at this interception here. and He's kind of threw it off his back foot, and he's got McCusack behind him, but, uh, boy, there was three, three Bulldogs right there in the vicinity. Yeah, it was well covered. You got to love this. A little switch of the hand here to protect the yes. football. I like that. Comes to the inside, leaves two Black River Pirates laying on the <laughs> yes, field. He did. He sure did. What a great. They're going to have to put uh, some ankle braces you know, on at halftime. I think at halftime, it would be interesting if we could find out in the rule books if that's not maybe the longest interception in Columbus Grove history because it was right near the goal line. I, you know, I got to believe it's in the top four or five. It's from the nine. It's a ninety-five yard reception. Yeah, it's got to be close to it. You know, a lot For of those. For postseason play, absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah postseason play most likely. Uh, I don't have any stats on that right. with me. But, um, you know, a lot of these schools have greater than 100 yards. Some of yes. them are 107, yes. 109. <laughs> yes. I've seen one, uh, at Spencerville, the record is 109 yards. Oh, my goodness. Somebody intercepted it. Right on the back line. On the back line <laughs> and ran it the entire distance. Sean McMichael. See, yeah. <laughs> and I'll bet Sean's going to hold that record and, for a while. <laughs> and the only reason I know that is because my son had it before. It was 99 <laughs> yards. So he beat uh, it by 10 so yards yeah, in the back he, of the end zone. Yeah. Here's Grosser in the gun. He's got McCusack in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to McCusack off to the left side. He's, He's going to go up the side, and there's another flag. And it looks like maybe that's in the vicinity of holding. So holding is becoming the theme right now as that's the third holding penalty, two against Grove and one against Black River. And right now Black River is kind of stuttering and staggering just a little bit in their offensive sets. Well, it's kind of interesting to me, um, and, and we mentioned this before, but Tyler sure. Rakusic only had 25 attempts, rushing attempts right. coming in, two and a half attempts per game. He, it seems like he's really getting the football quite a bit tonight. And they, they had three guys with over 400 yards receiving, and those guys are Nathan Urbis, who we've talked about, mm -hmm. Tyler McCusack, who is, is primarily a receiver, but he's running the ball tonight, and Blake Hopkins. So those are the three guys that uh, really are part of the big part of the offense. But even McCusack only has 21 catches on the year. Yes, you right, know, in right, 10 right. Games, that's only two catches a game. <laughs> And he's already been targeted four or five times. So here's Grosser in the gun. He throws off to Make the left six. side. And there's McCusack again, and they are continually going after him. Oh, no, no, that's number seven. Excuse me. That's Nathan Urbus. We talked about him a little bit earlier. So that will bring up third and 15 from the 11. Excuse me, second and 15. Yeah, I like that play. That's what, you know, in high school football, I love that play, that quick – bubble screen and, and get your athlete out there in space. But Columbus Grove, as I mentioned, such such excellent athletes on the outside. They play a 4-3 defense, and they got four four really good corners and safeties, and, and they close on those plays quickly. Second 15 from the 11. Here comes Grosser in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off. This is McCusack again. He's going to try to get around the corner. A nice tackle by number 13 for the Grove Bulldogs. That's Antonio Gray, and he is having a heck of a night. He's pumped up, man. Yes, he, he just, is. <laughs> he just ran back a, an interception I'd be for dying right now. pick six. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's pumped there. up, man. <laughs> he's out there making tackle after. Did you see him shed that yeah. blocker. What a great job by that young man. Shedding blocks and just making a perfect form tackle there. Hit, low, wrap, down. Oh. <laughs> That'll bring up third and 10 from the 15-yard line. Here's Grosser in the gun. He's got Hopkins off to his right. He's got trips to the left and a single receiver to his right. Here comes Grosser. He's going to roll to his left. He's going to look back. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to try to get rid of the ball, and he's bringing up the right side. And he goes out of bounds. I don't think that's going to be a first down, but it was close. Maybe it was. Let's take a look at that. It is a first down, so a great job by Grosser to get another Dale's concrete first down. Yeah, with 540 left, 
they need to score. They do. You're they, right. They You're really need right. to score. Uh, 14 to three is not an o o o you know, a deficit that can't right. be overcome, but you'd really like to get a score here going into the locker room. Well, but but here's the thing: with 14 to three, when you've got an offense like Grove that will grind it out with Barraza and Renner, you, you are in a hole right now. So you're you're absolutely right, Scott. So here comes Grocer. We got Hopkins in the backfield. And we've got stoppage of play here. Let's see what's going to happen. And Black River is going to take a timeout. They'll take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. With 5.39 to go, the Grove Bulldogs lead 14-3 on WSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. So that big Grove defensive line looks like a bunch of drywall out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're pretty sturdy. You yes, know, they are. The, the thing that, about that defense, though, we haven't talked about Tad Koch tonight. Oh, he's he, a fantastic he, linebacker. Yeah, yeah, and he's their number one tackler for Grove, and we haven't uh, really called his name out yet tonight. There's another flag on the – Black River Pirates, and they're going to say that it was a false start on that offensive line. Boy, that was quick. So uh, I don't know if you're able to pick up the coach here in the booth that is uh, unhappy with these calls. <laughs> well, they had, they've had 62 penalties, 487 yards worth um, this year through 10 games. So they're averaging about 48 yards, 50 yards in penalties each game. Here's Grocer as he's got a single man in motion. That's McCusack. He's going to hand the ball off to him, and he finds a seam. There goes McCusack up the middle, and he's taken down hard by number seven for the Grove Bulldogs, and that's A.J. Schaefer. Yeah, and I like Schaefer. He, uh, as, as he gets up, you're going to see at the end of this play, he starts on the left side and makes his way across there, number seven, to get the tackle from the left side of the field. And then after the play, kind of helps him up and gives him a little tap on the back. And uh, good sportsmanship. I love that. Love to see it, especially in high school football. Absolutely. I I'm so impressed with the speed of the Grove defense. Boy, even when they're getting beat downfield, they are they are really recovery well. And they're Grove. They jumped offside. That was number 62 for the Bulldogs. That's Kyle Lathrop, 5'11 junior, jumps off sides, and that's going to give Black River five extra yards. So a, a pretty, pretty flag-friendly first quarter, and boy, we started to pile them up here in the second quarter. Clock continues to run, 4.59, so we're first and five from the 42-yard line for the Pirates, down 14 to three. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Climber Stadium here in Columbus Grove, week one of the high school playoffs. Here's Grocer, looks across the middle under heavy pressure, and he's gonna be taken down. And boy, he sheds his first block, and he has to be taken down by number 52 for the Bulldogs, and that's Kylan Mays. You know, at one time this year, Scott, uh, before the Allen East Columbus Grove game, the Columbus Grove coaches had said they thought they had three linebackers who could all possibly be all state. I mean, that's that's a huge statement. Yeah, that's a big statement, and you know you got to back it up when you yes, get into the playoffs. Yeah, right, so that, that's yeah. where you're going to have to rise up and really show what you got. And 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 the linebackers are great, but I I, I really like the secondary. Oh, I do too. I, I think I they're, too. <laughs> they're all, all four of them are athletic. They're fast. They got great hands, offensively. They contribute. Defensively, they contribute. Here's Grocer in the gun. He gets it out quick, and he finds his man. He goes off the hands of McCusack, and he had him open, but just throws it a little short. Yeah, you see some smiles there as they get up. Uh, you know, yeah. I like to see that. Well, look, win or yeah. lose, these kids know what they've accomplished this year, and they know that uh, they'll forever remember their state playoff game. You know, and you said it earlier, it's too bad one of these teams has to lose and go home. When you got to give Black River credit, they fight. Yes, see, absolutely. You know, they started 0-4 yeah. and, and fought their way back to 6-4 and four with six straight wins. Yeah. And there was Grocer, and he tries to get a screen pass out to Hopkins. And you heard the coach here in the booth scream. It was there, and it was clearly there. And he had a lot of daylight in front of him, it, but he just overshoots him. Yeah, Hopkins a little upset, too. He wanted that football, wanted to make a play. Players make plays, yes, and do. he wanted to make a play. So 3.54 to go here, fourth and seven, and they are going to go for it. And here on the 
40-yard line. Boy, this is a big play. Oh, they're going to pooch kick it. So pooch kick it from the 40. And he got a nice kick. And that's going to take it down to about the 11-yard line. So it looked like they were going to go for it, Scott. He was in the gun. And uh, they end up pooch kicking it. Grosser averages 43.7 yards per punt. He's an excellent punter. <laughs> yes, he is. He and, really is. And, you know, he, he, uh, that, that's, that's the advantage, I think, of having a quarterback punter is that you have that threat. Yes, yes. And so you, great point. from a defensive standpoint, you, you've got to cover the receivers. You can't take a chance on leaving a receiver open or, or he'll take advantage of that. And so it gives him a little bit of time. He can step into those punts, be a little closer to the line of scrimmage, and, and, and the net is really good. Now here's Renner in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer in the backfield with him. He's got two to the right and two to the left. They've spread the offense out wide here. Let's see what they do. Try to get their athletes in space. Renner takes the ball. He's going to run it himself. Going to go off to the left side. He's going to be taken down for a gain of about two or three yards. So that's Brenton Renner. Yeah, number 66, Cooper McKean for Black River. Tried to catch Renner. <laughs> and that was not a race he was going to win. So they've got A.J. Schaefer now in the gun. They've got Trenton, or the, the, I'm sorry, Renner, excuse me. They've got A.J. Schaefer to the right. There's a man in motion. That's Barraza. They'll hand the ball off to him, and he cuts it up the field, and he gets through the linebackers, and he's got a lot of open space, and there goes Barraza. He's got one man to beat, and he's going to be taken down across midfield, but you saw the speed there of Barraza, and a nice job by number 83 from Black River, Jonathan McKean, the six-foot junior, catches him in the open space. Yeah, and that was all Barraza. Yes, you was. see on this play, Schaefer's out in front blocking, but he never hits anybody, never hits a soul. <laughs> no, All of that is Barraza just reading the defense, making the cuts, reading his blockers downfield. Huge gain. And now with 2.48 left on the clock, plenty of time to get in your playbook and get a score here. Yeah, here's Renner. He picks up about seven yards. Look, when you watch Barraza run, now I'm not saying he is this running back. He just, with his long strides, reminds me of Robert Smith from the early 90s at Ohio State. Yeah. He really does. Yeah. Well, that it might be the Ohio State on your mind because as you, <laughs> as you look at the screen here, we got some scarlet on That's one right. side and we got some, uh, you know, maize, maize on and, the other and, and, side <laughs> and almost dark blue on the other side. Uh, Trent Barraza will take the uh, Robert Smith comparison. Yeah, I'm How's sure. That? <laughs> Who wouldn't? Here's Renners. He's going to take it himself and he's going to take it in. Oh, no, he's going to be taken down at about the two-yard line. I thought he had a touchdown, and so did the Grove fans, but he's taken down quickly by number one, Johnny Cray. Johnny Cray. What a great football name, Absolutely. Johnny Cray. He ran him down. Yes, he did. Here you watch this, and, boy, he just gets through. He is really elusive, and he finds the hole, and a great job by that offensive line, and there's Johnny Cray on Johnny on the spot. Well, I mentioned Black River, they don't give up. They don't quit. Obviously, uh, you can see that uh, in that play. So here's the dogs. They'll, Renner will take a high snap, and he'll have to take it himself as he goes to the goal line, and he gets it. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown, Grove. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs on a great drive with 2.03 to go, and they extend their lead 20-3. to Yeah, and that could have been a disaster there. Yes. Really high snap. Renner's able to go up and get it, and then uh, – he had to push Barraza out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> he pushes Barraza out of the way, and Barraza kind of looked around like, who's pushing me from behind? So here's the extra point. They'll try to tack it on with 2.03 to go. Number 20 for the dogs, Shep Hawker, the wide receiver. Hold is good. Kick is up. And it is good. With 2.03 to go, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs take a 21-3 lead. You're watching high school football right here on WSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Union Bank is our replay sponsor. So a great drive by the Bulldogs, and that was all Trenton Barraza. And Renner caps it off with a nice 12-yard run. Well, the usual suspects, right? That's I right, mean, right. Uh, those are the guys that run the offense. But, uh, yeah, so I, apparently they're taking turns. So the offense <laughs> right. scored, the defense scored, and now the offense scored. we got a 21-3 uh, Columbus Grove lead with 2.03 left. And now, Scott, we talked about it earlier being down 14-3, to three, now 21-3, to three, and, and, and you've got that long bus ride. You've got the layoff a little bit. You're, you're at foreign territory, and this has got to be weighing on these young men's mind. They've got to respond here, and there's not a lot of time to respond. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, that's uh, 
give credit where it's due. Columbus Grove earned the right to host this absolutely, game in their absolutely. home. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, that that that's the reason that right, you want right. to host a game like that is so you can come and play on your familiar field and let the other team drive two and a half hours. Yeah, right. So Hawker with a kind of a pooch kick there, but uh, another flag thrown on the play. That's, I believe it's going to be off, a false start against Columbus Grove. Yeah, I think uh, they, well, they were trying to do the little pooch kick there, and the, that right side was yes. smelling opportunity. And uh, everybody wants excited. to play tonight. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to play tonight. So uh, got a little got a little too excited and uh, left before the football did. So that'll back it up five yards. You know, anytime you get into those, uh, special teams has a real challenge because you, 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 it's a, not the normal cadence. Sure. It's not the normal rhythm where the kicker comes up and kicks the football. You're doing something different, so timing is critical. So 2.03 to go. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Climber Stadium here in Columbus Grove on a beautiful fall night. My privilege to be in yeah. this game with you. Well, yeah. Thank you. I always do enjoy yeah. working with you, Scott. We always we get good games. We really yeah. do. <laughs> kind of dandy here right now. 21 to 3, but we'll see what happens. And a great job by number six, Zach Reynolds. Scott, we just keep calling Zach Reynolds over and over and over. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's Blake Hopkins on the return there. He averages 17.8, almost 18 yards per return. He gets about seven here. Yeah. And wow. just a, that that's a form tackle. Yes, I'm telling is. you right yeah. now, that that is coaching Andy Schaefer and his staff. And that's coaching from the peewee level to the right. junior high level. That is, yeah, right. you're absolutely right. Right, because they become habits. They're ingrained. Yep. You can see every Grove tackler is is low they're yes, hitting yep, yep and they're wrapping and there's no advancing that's right and here comes grocer in the gun he's going to hand the ball off to hopkins and he's going to be tripped up by number 61 dylan bryan what a great job by the defensive tackle as he shoots the gap and takes down the back from black river yeah dylan bryan's the third leading tackler fourth leading tackler on the columbus grove defense got 54 on the year 41 assists and seven solo tackles number eight right there that's going to bring up second and 15 from the 18-yard line. And boy, Black River's got to be real careful here. Otherwise, Columbus Grove may get the ball back. Let's see what happens here. Here comes Grocer in the gun. He's got Hopkins to his right, and Grocer throws off to the right side. He's got McCusack out there, and he's going to be tackled by number six. There's Blake Reynolds again. Excuse me, Zach Reynolds. Blake Reynolds may be his brother from a couple years ago. I'm not real sure about that, but he was a real good athlete here at Columbus Grove. Yeah, he's up uh, helping coach basketball now. Yes. At, uh, Pandora Gilboa. Crossing enemy lines. Just as <laughs> just as quiet as ever, too. Yeah. You know? uh, 54 seconds and the clock continues to run. And I think Black River is going to be happy with uh, just getting to the uh, locker room with the 21 to 3 deficit. Yeah, it's third and seven. So, um, y you know, you want to minimize the chance. If you do have, if you don't convert here and yeah. you do have to give the ball back to Columbus Grove, you want to have minimal time on the clock. Yeah, 35 seconds to go. Grove is up 21 to three. Scott, there's a lot of games in Northwest Ohio. Um, any matchups that intrigue you? I know we've got some three and six teams, and we've got some four and seven teams. And uh, you take a look at that Lima Senior matchup. They've got Edgewood tonight. And Edgewood, I don't know if you know this, but uh, the Cincinnati Inquirer said that uh, they were one of the teams that they picked to win the state title. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at this weekend on WSN. Saturday, Liberty Benton Archbold in the football. Saturday night at 6.30 is Pandora Gilboa at Upper Side of Valley and Wasion Van Wert Saturday night at 9 o'clock. I think that one will be an interesting game. You yeah. know, Van Wert is really loaded. Yeah, and we got our cameraman Jacob here. He's going to be doing some uh, district volleyball and soccer action this weekend. And we've got district finals at Ottaville. And we've got district finals at Kaleida, boys soccer and girls soccer. So our soccer specialist Jacob is here in the booth with us. Kicking it around. <laughs> we got to specialists all over the we place, do. don't we? We do. <laughs> yeah. We do. Jacob just grins and eats the hot dogs, right, Jacob? Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. 35 hey. seconds to go. I'll take care of him. That's he, right. he didn't get me one. Grocer throws it down. He's got oh, McCusack. Nice what a 
pitch and catch, and there goes McCusack into the end zone, and that is exactly what they needed, Scott. Well, and, and the coaches must have seen something because they've really been going to McCusick play after play after play on the ground and in the air. He finally delivers here on a huge play right before half. And that is absolutely what they needed. And watch Grocery. He's got all day to throw, and he finds McCusack just streaking down the sidelines, and they've been watching that all night, Scott. Well, that was off, that was off of Grocer's back foot, and yes. he put the ball perfectly, dropped it in from the sky, and McCusick did the rest. What a great pitch and catch from Grocer to McCusack. So here we'll go for the point after try with 25 seconds, and that puts them right back in the game, Scott. Yeah, it does. I, I thought they were just going to be content I did with too. going yes. into halftime and, and go from there, but... We mentioned they're fighters. That's right, kick is up and it is good. So with 25 seconds to go, the Black River Pirates have closed the gap to 21 to 10. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale Concrete is our first down sponsor. Yeah, Scott, I'm exactly what you said off, off air. Was I, I just thought they'd run the clock out. I thought they'd go in at 21 to three. And you're right, they're a fighter. They're, yeah. they're not going away. Yeah, they're not going away for sure. They're at least they're going to not go down without a fight. Mercusic, that's his fifth touchdown on the year. He's been everything tonight. He really and, and has. He, he's, he's gotten a lot of opportunity, I'll say that, and he delivered. Yes, you're absolutely right. So they're going to kick the ball off to Grove with 25 seconds to go. You just wonder what Grove's going to do here now. If they're going to try to push the ball down the floor, field, I can't imagine they would with 25 seconds to go. But uh, I didn't think they'd throw for a, <laughs> a huge play there. Here's Grocer as he'll kick the ball off. And he'll kick it deep. The up man, well, I'm just, I thought it was going to go deep, but it kind of died up there in the air, and the up man takes the ball and calls the fair catch. At number 14, Landon Schrader, working on his third-year letter. There's a lot of lettermen on this team for Grove. They play a lot of kids, and that's the, you know, they've got a lot of kids in that weight room, and they've got a great program up here. So here's Renner in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer beside him. Trenton Barraza is split out wide. They got him wide. Renner's going to hand the ball to Schaefer. Schaefer goes off the right side. As he gets through the line, he'll be taken down. The clock's going to continue to run. Schaefer trying to get the ball to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to try to get another playoff. Look for something deep. And Renner's just nope. going to throw it to the sidelines. They're going to step out of bounds. Great job, and he finds number five out there, Zane Steckscholdy. That's his first catch of the night. But here come the Grove Bulldogs almost to midfield. Well, be careful out there. Barraza has got number 83 for Black River defending him, and I feel like he's a little quicker. I feel like Barraza is quicker than most cars. Well, <laughs> yeah, he's in single coverage, yeah. and you get a good look at the matchup there. 83 yeah, right. plays tight end and, and, and defensive end, but he's out in coverage. Here's Renner. He looks across the middle. He rolls to his right. He's got his man out there. Oh, The ball almost a reception, but boy, a vicious hit out there. Number eight from Black River, Kenny Boggs. We've called his name quite a few times tonight. Kenny Boggs on the hit. Kenny Boggs. Sounds like our NASCAR he, driver. Yeah, Kenny he, Boggs. He, he, he jarred the football loose. <laughs> That's going to bring up nine seconds to go, Scott. Third and four from the 46. I would imagine they'd have to get to the at least 30, 35 yard line to attempt a field goal, would you not? Yeah, probably a good thing that ball was jarred loose. The clock probably would have yes, ran out. Right, Gives right, Grove right. one more chance. So here's Renner in the gun. He's going to give the ball to Schaefer. He's going to be hit immediately, and that will end the first half. So after one half, the first round of the state playoffs here in Ohio, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead the Black River Pirates 21-10. to You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Climber Stadium for the second half of tonight's action. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 
So back here for the start of the second half, the Grove Bulldogs lead 21 to 10. Let's take a look at some more high school football playoffs. Carey and Riverdale, the one and 16 seed. This is Division Six, Region 22. Colonel Crawford and Margareta, Northwestern and Western Reserve. And the game tonight, Columbus Grove Black River will play the winner of Northwestern and Western Reserve. Yeah, Northwestern down there by Springfield, Ohio. Yes. I, I I actually went to kindergarten through second grade there really? at Northwestern. <laughs> yes. I'm a Springfield native. And then right. my parents, know that. Uh, we moved and... Uh, Moved up here for a no, moved. Uh, mo no, I, I'm originally from Springfield. Okay, okay. So, nice, nice. Yeah. So the Grove Bulldogs lead 21 to 10, and we talked about it before halftime. What a huge touchdown for Black River to end the half. Yeah, no question about it. And they get the football coming out here in the second half, so they have an opportunity to uh, really make this game tight if they can have some and success yeah, offensively. Right, and even if they only get a field goal, they still are a one score away. Yeah. What a great view there on the screen, though, as I look at that, you know, the uh, the lights shining there, the halo effect right. and everything. It's a beautiful Friday night. Couldn't it ask is. for more perfect football weather. We, we've had great football weather this year, Scott. Very yeah. rarely have we had wet weather or in climate conditions. So. Yeah, I you know, I remember being at many games when my kids were playing and then even announcing some games where it was raining sideways or, yes, yeah. you know, it was uh, half rain, half snow, half sleet, and uh, – and, and we've been very fortunate so far, so knock on wood. Absolutely. So Columbus Grove will kick the ball off. I think it's Black global River. warming maybe, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other conversation, a whole other show. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so a relatively clean game in the first quarter. We got picked up with penalties in the second quarter. Both teams had a, well, Grove had a touchdown called back, which was huge at the time. Uh, but uh, made a big interception to, to, to get that touchdown back. Right. So here's Shep Hawker. He'll kick the ball off again. And we, cut, we, we say the same names over and over, and they, but uh, they are doing some outstanding jobs on both sides of the ball. We are underway for the start of the third quarter here. We'll pick it up on the five-yard line, bring it up to about the 20-yard line. That's where Black River will take over. We talked about him earlier in the first half. Eric Grosser, the six-foot, 190-pound junior, he's had a really nice performance tonight as he has done a great job of leading this offense, throwing and running, and uh, avoiding a lot of pressure from the Grove Bulldogs. Well, just give a little credit on that kick coverage right there. Blake Hopkins has had 14 returns this year of kicks, kickoffs. Averages 17.8 per return. Got about four on that one. Yeah, so a great job of coverage by the Bulldogs. Let's go up, <laughs> you know, I, I've been touting the uh, defensive secondary for Columbus Grove all game, and uh, I think they relaxed on that last play right before half where they Black River got the touchdown. It'll be interesting to see if they got lit up at halftime and if what they do to respond. So there's Grocer finds Hopkins out in the flat, and Hopkins takes it up to the 30-yard line. And that will be another Dales Concrete first down. So right away they come out throwing the ball, and we've got an injury on the field it looks like, and that's a Black River offensive lineman it looks like to me. Yeah, Hopkins is a threat. Almost 15 yards a catch, and you see he picks up about 11 or 12 here enough to move the chains. Number 13 there for uh, Columbus Grove, Antonio Gray. Recipient He's of the had a pick six. He's tonight. had a great game, but uh, on that particular K, he tried to punt, punch the ball out instead of making the tackle. So we'll take a break here as they attend to this uh, young man on the field. We'll be right back after this message. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by the Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Union Bank is our replay sponsor. Did you get a number on that play, Scott? Yeah, that was number three, Alex Sutherland. He walked off at his own power, a senior wide receiver defensive back for Black River. Grocer in the gun. There's another flag, and you're going to get some movement on the line there by Black River. So another false start, as we've seen quite a few of those tonight. Yeah, it looked like the man in motion stopped and proceeded forward before the ball was snapped. A little, bring little miscommunication. You know, it was on two. He thought it was on one, maybe. <laughs> I, 
either way, it's a penalty. <laughs> That'll bring up second and six from the 25. 11 16 to go. Grove leads 21 to 10 from Climber Stadium here at Columbus Grove High School. His grocer in the gun. He's going to roll off to his left. He's looking downfield. Heavy pressure by the Grove Bulldogs. And you're going to get that could be a. Was that going to be intentional grounding? Uh, the rule has changed this yes, year. Yes, yes, you're it's right. A, it's a new rule change. If the quarterback is outside of the tackle box, if he's uh, outside of the hash, he can uh, throw it away, basically. Uh, there doesn't have to be a receiver in the area. I, I didn't know that um, and kind of questioned that in an earlier game this year, and I, I got a text from Denny Morris who explained <laughs> yeah. that. The, uh, which which I, I was glad to hear that he, he was watching the game, but um, – you know, explained that the rule had changed. I work with Jim Epperly, and Jim tells me all the rule changes and things like that. So <laughs> right. <laughs> every time I uh, make a call or something, he'll say, well, you did this, this, and this. So, so here we go. I know Jim. Here goes Grosser. Marcusic in the motion. He gets the handoff. He's going to take it up the left side, and he's tackled hard by number seven, A.J. Schaefer. We've been calling his name a lot tonight, Marcusic. We have. You're right. And that is another Dale's Concrete first down. So, Black River coming out, trying to get something going here, down 21 to 10. Good job blocking by that left side offensive line of Black River to give him a hole. Black River plays in the Lorain County Conference. They finished the year six and one. We mentioned it earlier, they started out the year 0 and four, win six in a row, so playing their best football right now. Here's Grocer as he rolls to his right under heavy pressure. He's looking downfield, and he is going to be hit hard, but he bounces back up and makes the completion near the 50-yard line to number two, and that's Tyler McCusick. What a – did you see that, Scott? He took a vicious hit and bounces right back up and throws a dart to Tyler McCusick. Yeah, it looked like number 14, Landon Schrader here. Kind of atypical for Columbus Grove. You see he just didn't quite get him wrapped up there. I was into escape. How did he not go down? I don't know. <laughs> I just I fell down watching that hit. So here comes Grosser and the Pirates. First and ten from the 47-yard line. There goes McCusick in motion. And they're going to hand the ball up to Hopkins. He gets through the line. Maybe a gain of a yard taken down there by the Grove defensive line. Yeah, he lost his footing there a little bit on his plant foot when he went to drive after the handoff. He uh, just didn't get a whole lot of traction there went down. And, and I love the uh, the attitude right now of Black River. Not not trying to get the big strikes. They're taking their time. They understand they're down two possessions, but they understand there's a lot of football left. Second and ten. Here comes Grosser in the gun. He's got quads to the left, and he's got a single receiver to his right. He's looking downfield on the right side. He's got single coverage down there, and they find him. Oh, oh, are you, oh. you have got to see this. I'm telling you, that may be the catch of the year if he's in bounds. No, it looks like his uh, on the rebound there, he's able to make the catch, but his feet were out, out of, of bounds. bounds. Yeah, well, this is amazing. Tyler McCusack, unbelievable. Watch this, Scott. I just can't believe this. Well, he goes up and knocks it. It gets knocked away, and somehow he stays with it, but you can see his feet. Oh, okay. We're out of bounds <laughs> when he wow. came back to the football. So what a great effort, though. He <laughs> is, uh, you know, I, I mean, this kid is making plays. He it, is. It, it, it's, it's um, you know, I'm glad to see they're going to him and, and giving him opportunities because he is responding. Scott, we haven't talked a lot about uh, Eric Grosser, his arm strength. He just flips that ball down. He, he's doing a great job. Well, so. I, I like that pass, too. He just kind of dropped it in over the defense. But, again, give credit to that Columbus Grove secondary. There were two red shirts in the area yeah. knocking the football away. We'll take another timeout. We'll step aside. The Grove Bulldogs lead 21-10, to 10, 9-18 to go. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Union Bank is our replay sponsor. So there we see it again. Eric Grosser throws the ball down the field. His receivers are doing a fantastic job tonight, albeit out of bounds, but what a tremendous effort. Well, they are uh, accepting the challenge from Grove's defense. 9.18 to go. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Climber Stadium, week one of the Ohio High School football postseason. Here's Grosser in the gun. 
He's got Hopkins back there with him. He's got two receivers to his left. He's got a man in the slot, and he's got a single receiver to his right. Grosser takes the snap here. He's going to roll left. He looks around. He's going to throw to the left side, and he overshoots his intended target. And that was, let's see, that was number seven for the Pirates, Nathan Urbus. And that'll bring up fourth and ten. Let's see what they do if they elect to punt it. And here goes Grosser is in the gun, but he's not far enough back. And Grove's putting a man back. And they've got trips to the right. They've got a single receiver in the slot. Let's see what they do if they go for it or punt it. And Grosser's going to look to throw it. He's going to roll to his right. He's got a man. It's oh. intercepted. Intercepted at the and he is going to take it the distance, number 14. That Are is you? Landon Schrader, and that's a Grove touchdown. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Two wow. pick sixes tonight, unbelievable. We got a flag down at midfield, but it's away from the play, so let's see what we got. Offense and defense taking turns tonight. Unbelievable. That is the second defensive touchdown, the second pick six for the Dogs. Yeah, illegal man downfield is what the call was. Yes. So the touchdown will stand. Unbelievable. And that's going to make it 27 to 10 before the extra point is. And here you see him rolling out, Scott. And uh, his receiver didn't get to the spot in time. Yeah, it looks like he was going to Hopkins. And uh, Sh um, Schrader just cut in, took the short route there, and pick six. So here is the extra point attempt by Hawker. Got to give Hawker credit. He's 33 for 35. Yes, he is. He's very good. And he 34 gets for 36. One. So with 8.59 to go, Grove Bulldogs extend the lead 28 to 10. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete a decorative stamping and lip sync for all your commercial and residential needs. Yeah, as Grove kicks off here, Andy Schaefer, Columbus Grove's coach, second all-time coaching records with uh, 13 playoff games. Wow. He's nine and four. He does a great job. 2014, 2018, 2020, Look and Look at the 21. names on that list, Scott. Those are some really great coaches in Northwest Ohio. Yeah, the leading Columbus Grove uh, coach for all-time playoff coaching is Jerry Cooper. He's got 17 games, uh, playoff games. Andy Schaefer's got 13. Mike Fell. That's amazing. Yeah, from Mike Fell, Lima Senior. Lima Ada, Senior Salina, days. Yeah, yeah five, he, he had five games, yes. five playoff games, and then Scott Palti with three. Well, here comes Black River. Now they are in a bigger deficit. And a little shovel pass out there to Hopkins, and he's going to be taken down behind the line of scrimmage. And a great job by number 62 for the Grove Bulldogs. That's Kyle Lathrop, the 5'11 junior. You know, you made a point earlier, Scott, and you talked about some of these guys being a little undersized, and that's Kyle Lathrop. But, boy, he gets to the ball quick. Yeah, he does. I, You know, I think um – there's a lot of things uh, that can happen over the course of the game, sure. but but size wears on you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's one of those things where you can keep up for a while, but eventually those big bodies pressing against you and, and, and making tackles on top of you can take its toll. Here comes Grocer. He's got Hopkins in the backfield. He's going to throw down the right side. He's got single coverage out there. And that is almost picked off and almost an almost a re amazing reception by number two, Tyler McCusack. And they like that right side with McCusack down there in single coverage. Yeah, and you get a couple Grove guys uh, tapping him on the helmet there. They appreciate his effort <laughs> and, his, and what he's brought to the game tonight. And did you see the hit that Kyle Gro that Grocer took in the quarterback position? Boy, he really got lambasted by the Grove defense. Well, you know, you're down 28-10, so you, good probability that uh, you know Black River is going to be looking to try to make yeah, big plays right. here. So your your defensive secondary really has some opportunity to make plays. It's going to bring a third and 12 from the 29-yard line. Here's Grocer with Hopkins in the backfield. Grocer's going to roll to his right. They blitz. And they blitz, and you're right. He throws it down the right side again and in single coverage. 
Number six for the Grove Bulldogs, Zach Reynolds on the coverage. And they are continually going down the right side to McCusack. Yeah, and the boys back there, they like him. You know, they're, yes, they they're peeling the mud <laughs> off his helmet and giving him a little tap there, showing him some love. They're getting their workout tonight, and he's helping them out. They are. They are. Well, you know, they appreciate, you know, players appreciate players. Yeah, they do. You're right. And you see that uh, the Grove defensive line is really getting into quick pressure. Punt. There's another quick punt. Barraza back for the Grove Bulldogs, and he'll let it bounce back there. And it's going to go uh, almost close to midfield at the 40-yard line. So that's where the Grove Bulldogs will take over with 7.45 to go. We are now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at wsn.tv slash John Reed. There's a great coach from the old Northwest Ohio days and cold water football. And everybody I talk to about John Reed has positive things to say. I have never heard a negative nope, word. You're right. You're right. So here come the Grove Bulldogs. Look to tack on this lead here. They've got Renner in the backfield. He's got A.J. Schaefer off to his left and Barraza in motion. They're going to hand to Schaefer. There goes Schaefer off the right side. He gets out to the about the 45-yard line. He'll be taken down, excuse me, close to the 41-yard line. What a, what a great compliment that A.J. Schaefer is to Trenton Barraza. you got speed on one hand and you got power on the other, and, boy, they just keep coming at you. Yeah, and if you feel like you're going to stop those two, you, you, <laughs> you've got a pretty good quarterback there yeah, throwing the football yeah. around. And Renner, you're right. So here comes Renner in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer in the backfield with him. They're going to hand the ball off to Barraza off the left side. Here goes Barraza as he tries to get to the outside. And a nice tackle by number two, Tyler McCusack. As he gets to uh, do a little tackling there. He's been tackled quite a bit tonight. Well, and I, I, I like he returned the favor. You yes, know, he helps yeah. it, helps the guy up. It's really good sportsmanship out here. And what, what I like most right now is that uh, – you know, it, it, it's a it's an uphill climb. <coughs> Excuse me, it's an uphill climb for Black River yes. right now. But they are continuing to battle and continuing to play hard. And you got and you, there is uh, Black River jumping there off sides. You got to believe <laughs> Scott Nurse that with this lead, Columbus Grove is going to continue gr grinding the ball on the ground. Yeah, they're they're going to rely mostly on the ground game at this point. Run the clock, avoid injuries, shorten the game. Sure. That's going to bring up another Dales Concrete first down. With 6.39 to go. The Grove leading 28 to 10. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Climber Stadium here at Columbus Grove. Here's Renner in the backfield. He's got Barraza off to his left, and he's got A.J. Schaefer in the slot. He's got two to the right and one to the left. He's going to take the snap, a high snap, and he's going to throw it off to the right side. He's got a man wide open, and that's going to be Shep Hawker and another Grove touchdown. What a well-designed play. He got behind the defensive secondary, and he puts another six points on the board. Yeah, that's a play they ran in the first half that was called back. Yes, you're right. Yep. On a penalty, and uh, they, they put that in their hip pocket, waited for the right moment. You see a high snap here again. We've seen a couple of those tonight. That's something you can guarantee Andy Schaefer will address this week in practice. And did you see what happened? The, the other receiver was on the far side. He went up and ran a curl pattern. The defensive back stopped, and Hawker just kept on going down the side. So Hawker gets the touchdown. Now he gets a chance for the extra point. Well designed. Absolutely. The snap is back. Hold is good, and the kick is good. So with 6.12 to go, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs have extended that lead 35 to 10. You're watching high school football right here. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Hawker Drywall is our scoreboard sponsor. So, Scott, as soon as announcer guy Mr. Holbrook says they're going to run the ball, Bam, they throw it through the air. <laughs> yeah, they uh, that, that that play was well designed. Very and, and, well designed. And, you know, probably everybody on the Black River side assumed the same sure. thing. They're going to run the football. And Shep just ran by them. So now we talked about it earlier in this half that uh, Black River really becomes one-dimensional now as they're going to have to move the ball through the air. And not that they can't, but, boy, the uphill climb they have right now. So uh, we are – 25-point lead for the Bulldogs here with 6-12 to go in the third quarter. 
And a nice deep kick that will be fielded at about the 10 yard line. This is number 34. Hopkins for Black River, and he's taken down hard on the 20-yard line. So you, and, and now, you know, Scott, now you watch the Black River kids coming off the field, and they're hanging their heads a little bit. You just wonder if uh, it's not taking a toll on them. A little body language there. You saw yeah. that from Hopkins. You know, Hopkins, we mentioned, averages 24 yards per kickoff return. He, he's gotten about uh, – he got about 12 on sure. that one. The, the previous kickoff, he, he got about four or five. And, uh, you know, that weighs on you. Yeah, it sure does. So let's see what Black River can do with 6.06 to go here in the third quarter. The grocer continues in the quarterback position. He's in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right, and he's got a man in motion. That's Hopkins in motion. Grocer's going to throw the ball out to McCusack. He gets him on the left side. Be taken down at about the 25 yard line, gain of five, maybe six. Taken down by number 13 for the Grove Bulldogs, Antonio Gray. We've called him all night. He's had a fantastic game. Just trying to get their athletes out in space, and uh, we had talked about that. They're, they're, their coach's keys to the game, Scott, and if you look at these keys, take care of the football, which they really haven't. They've got a few turnovers. Uh, limit big plays from Grove. They haven't done that. Gang tackling and athletes in space. Uh, they've done those two quite well, but uh, the other two have made too much of a factor. You see A.J. Schaefer coming off the end. And Grocer was all in trouble on that play. Yeah, and I think there's going to be intentional grounding, ah, maybe roughing the I was passer. Say, I think it's going to be roughing the passer. Yeah, but there was no receiver. He right. was inside the tackle box. I think that's what he's going to talk about here. I think you're right, Scott. You're absolutely right. And I, and I, I got a feeling the Black River crowd is going to be fired up because they, they believe their quarterback was hit late. Yeah, I think these right, penalties though. are going to offset. Yeah. And uh, – Maybe replay the down. <laughs> Let's see what they call here. There. You know, you get a good look at the officiating crew right there. And, you know, for those that don't know, the officials are selected for playoff games based on, you know, their evaluations yes, and how well system, they yes. do during the regular season. The same in all sports, uh, high school sports. So these guys are, you know, the best, uh, the, yeah. the cream of the crop. That's right. That's right. And they are going to call intentional grounding on Black River. And roughing the roughing passer. The passer, those will offset. Yep, replay second down. So unfortunate for Black River, but they, yeah, they, get, they got it right. So it's going to bring up second and five from the 24-yard line with 5.22 to go. And they've really, really got to get something going here in the head coach for Black River, Kyle Clark, is discussing it with the official. And he's bringing a bunch of them over to his side. So I don't think Kyle Clark is going to like what he hears. But uh, exactly, you're right, Scott. It was the right call. Yeah, I, I, I saw on the replay when, when the ball hit the ground, there were five offensive linemen standing there yes. and no receivers yeah. anywhere in the area. He's pretty far out on the field, though. Yes, he, he is. He obviously he is, is uh, but he's, very he, concerned. Know, he's not. He's not demonstrative. He, he's, no. he's doing it respectful, and uh, he's doing it the right way. We'll see how this ends up, but I don't, they're not going to change it. <laughs> see a little little banter, a little friendly conversation yeah, there between Antonio Gray and. Rakusic. Again, I got to say, both teams have exhibited great class. Yeah, you're tonight. right. Absolutely. Good sportsmanship, uh, respect for each other, players, coaches, officials, everybody involved in the game, and that's truly what you want to see. Absolutely. I'm going to give a little shout out to our camera guys, Seth Hegemeyer, Marshall Jordan, and Jacob O'Neill, doing a great job tonight, getting all the instant replay and all the great shots, and Wayne. Gets and Derrick Henry down the truck are doing a fantastic job. You said it earlier, this this whole production has been fantastic tonight. Yeah, well, we've got uh, great views of all the big plays. Absolutely. So here comes Gesser in the gun. He's under heavy pressure, and he's just going to throw it away. And he had an intended receiver out there. That was McCusack. And that Eric Grosser, again, uh, comes up short. It's going to bring up third and five from the 24. So he is really under heavy pressure. And uh, you're starting to see that uh, Grove defensive line take charge. 
Well, they know that they're going to throw. Yes. So yeah, they're bringing the rush. You're absolutely right. Some of the outside linebackers are, are rushing as well. So it's uh, he, he doesn't have time. He's got to get rid of the football quickly. And, yeah, and what a luxury, Scott, to have, be able to put those DBs on an island and go single coverage and you, knowing you're going to have an advantage. There's McCusick. As he tries to go around the side, he gets nothing out there. And he is hit hard by that Grove defense. That's going to bring up fourth down. A yeah, good play there by Landon Schrader to kind of blow this thing up. You see on the jet sweep here, 14 for Columbus Grove. Gets a piece of him, enough just to kind of redirect him and drive him outside. And yeah. those DBs from Grove do the rest of the work. And they're number 50, Tad Koch, the big-time linebacker, the 6'3", 240-pound senior. Boy, he laid the lick there, did he not? And another pooch kick there by Grocer. It's a nice, friendly bounce. It's going to go down to close to the... 27-yard line. That's where Columbus Grove will take over with 4.36 to go. I like the way Grocer punts the ball only about seven yards yes, deep. Yeah. And he gets it off quick, and it's very productive. As I mentioned before, he's averaging almost 40 yards a punt. You know, we take a look at this uh, Black River team, and Grocer is a junior. Hopkins is a junior. Uh, a couple of those receivers are underclassmen, so they've got a, like, a bright future. Excuse me. So here comes Grove, Renner in the gun. We got Barraza behind him. He's got trips to the left or two to the left, two to the right. Renner takes the snap, flips it back to Barraza as he looks to get a block. He goes off the right side. He's going to get a gain of about seven or eight yards and a nice run by Trenton Barraza. Well, this is what Columbus Grove wants to do at this point. They want to run the football, keep that clock moving, stay in bounds. And we, we haven't talked about it, but if, if Grove scores here, then we're in a running clock situation. Am I right. correct, right? Right. So here comes Renner. He's got Barraza behind him. He's got Schaefer in the slot there. High snap. Renner's going to keep it himself, go across the middle. Hit hard by that Black River defense. Number 34, Hopkins on the tackle. A nice tackle by him. And keep that clock running at 3.55 here in the third quarter. I'm going to bring up second and seven from the 41-yard line. This is Renner in the gun. Barraza behind him. One single receiver to his right and two to the left. And throw off to the left side. This is Reynolds on the left side. He's got some clear space out there. He's got one man to beat, and he's taken down at the 34-yard line, and a great job by number six, Zach Reynolds, as he finds some space out there and gets a big gain for the Bulldogs. And again, this is a pass, but really it's almost like an extension of the right. run game. Very short pass, just get it out to an athlete. Reynolds in space, let him do the work. He's Grove's second leading receiver. Has a touchdown, averages 14.8 yards per catch. Excellent option. And the Grove Bulldogs are on the move again. It's Hawker in motion. They're going to flip the ball to him. And he is going to. I thought he was going to be taking down behind the line, but he's going to pick up about five yards. Great job by Shep Hawker making nothing, making something out of nothing. And you got to love that if you're a quarterback. That goes down as a pass. That's right. That's right. Pass That's completion. Right. <laughs> Mr. Renner will appreciate that one. They're just so elusive when they get the ball. and Just a great job of keeping those legs moving and finding space. Well, you know, traditionally Columbus Grove has always been strong, very physical and strong. they got players that are just, you know, you go back sure. to Blaine Mag and yes. the Mags. Oh, my and all goodness. They're, they're just – they're, they've always been strong, and uh, you're not going to bring them down with an arm tackle. Here's Renner in the gun. He's got Barraza on his left side. He's going to keep it himself, go off the left side, follow his blockers. He goes up the middle, and he had Trenton Barraza out in the middle there blocking for him. And he's taken down by that Black River defense, and he gets closer to the goal line. And that is another first down for the Grove Bulldogs. Yeah, and this was a design quarterback run all the way. He tucks it and runs. Nice run by the quarterback. Another Dale's Concrete first down. Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. 
That'll bring up first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Renner in the gun. He's got Trenton Barraza off to his left. He's got two to the right, one to the left. He's got Zach Reynolds split out wide to the left. He's going to keep it himself, go off the right side. There he goes towards the goal line. It's taken down by a defensive lineman from Black River. Well, that's going to put him into the positive yardage for the season. He's got 27 runs, came into the game with negative five yards rushing, <laughs> as quarterbacks typically do, because any time you're sure. sacked, uh, that's considered a rushing play and you lose yardage. But uh, he's into the positives now, so got to feel good about that. And that'll bring up second and five from the 15-yard line. One minute to go here until the fourth, or the, until the end of the third quarter. Excuse me. I think it's Schaefer time. I think you're right. There's Schaefer in the slot there. There's a the handoff right up the middle. Big number 14 for the Grove Bulldogs. Landon Schrader, the six foot, 175-pound senior. Boy, he looks a lot bigger than six foot, 175, doesn't he? <laughs> Yeah, be, you know, for a high school player, 175 pounds is, is pretty well yeah, put together. Sure, and, sure. Uh, you know, Braz is getting a little break back there. They bring in Just Landon a, another Schrader. Just fresh and, runner, yeah. And, uh, you know, he there's no drop-off. Senior. Now we're first and goal, Scott, from the eight-yard line. Trying to get him to jump offside. He'll look across at his head coach. Wait for the play call. He's got Schaefer in the slot. Excuse me, he's, yeah, he's got Schaefer and Schaefer back there with him. Schaefer and Schroeder, excuse me. This is Schroeder, gets the handoff, and he takes it into the end zone for a Columbus Grove touchdown. Number 14, Landon Schroeder takes it in, and he makes it 41-10 to 10 with seven seconds to go in the third quarter. And let's give credit to the coaches here. The defensive alignment for Black River had a huge gap on that right side. I think they changed the play call. If yeah, you, if, right. if, if, if you remember, they stopped mid-cadence, looked over to the sidelines. So the coaches got a new play in, and it uh, took them right into the end zone. And here comes Shep Hawker as he will attempt to. 35 of 37, yeah, and that's... working on his percentage <laughs> continues to climb. He's fantastic. So Hawker He's will up try to, to about 96% on the year. High snap. Kick is up, and it is good. With seven seconds to go until the fourth quarter, Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead 42 to 10. Watching high school football right here, WSD. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipsync for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale's Concrete is our first down sponsor, so be sure to check out our highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award on the WSN YouTube page. As Scott Nurse and I will pick a Stolly Hustle Award winner here before the end of this game, and uh, lots to choose from tonight, Scott. Yeah, no question about it. It's going to be a difficult choice. It sure is. Got a few uh, nominees, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. We've had a pick six <laughs> twice. Yes, we have. And Antonio has played a fantastic game. He really has. And then Shep has put together Shep, quite a yes, bit. He has. As well. He's got That's a touchdown. Right. He's got, uh, you know, been, been involved in all three phases of the game. So, yeah. And at Black River... Would have won. I'd have had to give it to Tyler Mercusic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He, he's had, he just had a <laughs> phenomenal game. That's right. He's had a fantastic game. So but uh, they're facing a pretty big uphill battle at this point. So there's a deep kick to the Black River player there, number 34. That's Hopkins. He tries to weave through the line there, and he gets to about midfield, taken down by number 57 from the Grove Bulldogs, Landon Ockmoody. But there is a flag down on the play. See what that is. More than likely, probably a block in the back. If uh, that holds true to what usually happens on kickoffs here. Yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't. I Not didn't sure where it. it happened. It might have been a hold there, offensive could hold. Could be. Yeah, it could be. Looks like. Uh, see what they call here. Looks like there might have been a holding on that. Not seen a call made yet but they are moving the ball back to the 15 yard line let's 
So they call it a hold, apparently? Yeah, I thought I saw a hold in the middle of the field. Uh, Columbus Grove player was trying to make a tackle and uh, looked like there was some jersey and pull down. So here's <coughs> Eric Grosser as he throws the ball out wide and taken down behind the backfield. And just a great job by the Grove defense. And uh, we are now in running clock territory, Scott, as that clock will not stop unless an injury, correct? Injury, timeouts. Right. Touchdown. Uh, score. The score, yeah. Change of possession. Yeah. And that's that's pretty much it. But it's going to continue to run. The game will go quickly from here. It's a little bit hard to get used to sometimes. Sure is. Yeah, it, it is. It, yeah. Incomplete pass, out of bounds. It keeps going. It continues <laughs> to run. That's right. Bring up second 16 from the nine. And they do a little little hook and ladder there. So you try to get back to the original line of scrimmage. So pulling out all the tricks right now, trying to get back in this game as they try to get the ball to Hopkins. He's their speed guy on the outside, Blake Hopkins, the 5'11", 165-pound running back. You see here a little trickery there. McCusack tries to pass the ball off to Hopkins successfully. Goes up the sideline. That'll bring up third and three, so a manageable third down for the Pirates. McCusack with another reception. That's right. Here's Grosser in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Hopkins, and he is not going to get a first down, and that's going to bring up fourth in about four. Yeah, Hunter Sudlow, number 56, a senior. We haven't called his name much tonight. 6'1", 178 pounds, was in there, blew that play up. It's going to bring up fourth and three from the 22. So Black River will have Grosser in the gun. They will have... Three receivers to the right, trips to the right. They've got a man in the slot. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they punt the ball here, but Grosser might. Yep. And he does punt it. So they will, Grove will not put a man back, obviously. They don't need to have any issues with that. They're going to get the ball back up 32 with 9.30 to go. And that clock's going to continue to run, except for a change of possession right. here, which we have. And immediately after Grove takes possession, that clock will start. Now, Scott, I said it earlier, I, I would be highly unlikely to see Grove throw the ball in the air. Yeah, I don't think they will. They're, they're, they're going to uh, run the football. But because of the continuous clock, even if they do throw the football, if they're successful or not, incomplete yeah. pass, it will continue to run. So really, uh, sort of the playbook is open. And they've got some clean uniforms in there. So it looks like the second string is in there. The number one, Kyle Hopkins, is in at the quarterback position for the Dogs. Kyle Hopkins has three completions, four attempts on the year, 48 yards, 75%. That ain't bad. And this is number 44 as he gets some big-time yardage for the dogs. Number 44 is Josh Gannon, the 5'6 sophomore, as he rumbles and stumbles his way up the sidelines. Great to see these young kids get a chance to play and uh, in, a, in a state playoff game. Yeah, Josh Gannon. Uh, has 94 yards and a touchdown coming into the game. Averages 11.8 yards per carry. Picks <laughs> up uh, good stats. <laughs> yeah, picks up a little more than that there. And you can see he he's no small guy. No, he's I not. mean, you know, <laughs> um, you know, and and that's part of what makes a, a good team successful is those guys that are you know sure. st standing and waiting are pretty good too, and they challenge the other side of the football every day. Hand off again to number 44 there, Josh Gannon. They're going to ride that young man all the way down the field, I would expect, with the clock continuing to run. Now we're at the 820 mark. Columbus Grove continues to lead 42 to 10, opening week of the high school football playoffs. Yeah, as a, uh, I don't know what you call it, a former dad. <laughs> A dad of You're a, still a dad. Uh, you know, a dad of a kid who played in sure. high, several yeah. kids who played in high school. You know, they get in this opportunity. I'd like to see the quarterback throw one. Absolutely. So we've got an injury on the field. A athlete from Black River is down. So why uh, they take ten to him and make sure he's okay. We're gonna step aside, take a break. You're watching high school sports from WLS. Welcome back to Climber Stadium. And uh, we've got a number stop on that young man, number 63. That is Dylan Sergalis, the 5'8", 210-pound senior, being helped off the field. And he does look like he is in a little bit of pain. 
Yeah, a little ginger there coming off the field. Not sure what the injury was. Did, wasn't able to see that. So here's Hopkins in the gun. He's got Josh Gannon off to his right side. He'll take the snap and he'll keep it himself as he goes up the middle of the field. He gets hit hard by that Black River defense. Gets a gain of about five to six yards, but he keeps that, keeps that offense on the field and the clock continues to move. There you go. And you, and he's got his name in the stat that's books, right? right? That's as right. a rushing attempt that's and right. positive yards. Good for that young man. Yeah. Good for that young man. Love to see it. So it looks like we've got Hopkins will continue in the game here. I thought they had a new quarterback, but Hopkins stays in. They've got trips to the left. He's going to keep it. Or he's going to toss it back to number 10 for the Grove Bulldogs. That's Braylon Barrientes, 5'10", junior. He comes into tonight with 47 yards, six attempts, averages 7.8 per carry. We've got a Grove player down. Grove Bulldog now. Let's see if we can find out what happens here. Oh, he was hit hard, but he uh, he jumps right up, and that was a almost a helmet-to-helmet -helmet type hit, but he does get up. They help him off the field. That was number 10. That was Barry Entez. He was the ball carrier there. So uh, took a vicious shot there. But, you know, I like that uh, he never let loose of the football. Yeah. We got the clock stopped because of injury. Now it's restarted. Good catch. <laughs> Keep that clock running. Danny Hilbert, Scott Nurse from Climber Stadium here in Columbus Grove, and a fantastic effort by the dogs tonight. I've been waiting on this all night long. <laughs> Columbus Grove averages, their punt averages 29 and a half yards. Their net punt. Oh, we got a block punt, Scott. 27. Don't mean to talk over you, but we got a block punt. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was just going to say how good Columbus Grove has been on punts <laughs> and punt coverage. They only give up two yards of net return, and they get that one blocked. And number 57, Shane Davis. Watch this. It was a bad snap, but Shane Davis comes out. and Look at that effort. What a great job by that young man. But it wasn't Shane Davis. I'm sorry. Shane Davis recovers it, but was it number 82? I believe so. Yeah, I think it was 82. I don't have an 82 on the roster here, Scott. Do you? I got an 83. Yeah, it might have been 83 there. They're, okay, they're slapping yeah. ha hands yeah. and Jonathan it's, McKean, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the, again, the, a, a bounding snap back to the punter. Right. Grove has had some difficulties with they snaps. Have. Yes. We, we've seen high snaps in That's the shotgun. Uh, we've seen a high snap on a on a extra point that the, the holder was able to corral and get down and and get good and. And now we've seen a, There's a, a snap again on the punt. On the right side as he tries to get up the field. But Grosser hands the ball off to him as he sweeps through the line. Well, you know, Black River's probably going to go down here. I'm not, I don't think I'm making a huge jump here. They're probably going to go down, but I like that they're still fighting. They're still playing oh, hard. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice to see them it feel good for them to be able to score here. Absolutely. So 551 to go. Grove still leads 42 to 10. Here's Grosser in the gun. He's got three to the left. He's going to throw off the left side. This is McCusack, and he drops the ball, started to run that before might... he caught it. Well, that was close to being a live football right there. I think you're right, Scott. You are absolutely right. I mean, they blew it dead as an incomplete pass, but as you can see, wow. That was that, close. That was very that close. close. Very close. That clock continues to run. If third and two. Yeah, if Black River can get it in the end zone here, they can stop that running clock as it'll go under 30. And you got to think this is four down territory. Absolutely. Here's Grosser. As he moves his man out to the left. He goes back into the gun. He's got three to the left, two to the right. He's going to throw to the left side. He's got his man out there. He's going to pick up a first down, tries to make a man miss. And that's another Dale's Concrete first down for Black River with 4.48 to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's Nathan Urbis, their number one receiver. Averaging 20.4 yards per catch this year. Not getting that on this one, but enough for the first down. Fresh set of downs for the Pirates. Here we go, 4.25 to go. There's McCusick in the motion there. They're going to hand him the ball. He tries to go around the right side. He does get around there. Gets closer to the goal line, shoved out of bounds. But, again, that clock will continue to run. 
you know, I was thinking about this today, Black River Pirates. It's kind of a cool name. Especially you for know? Halloween time. Well, <laughs> it, it, it just Black River it sounds, you know. Sinister. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the Pirates, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> it, uh, it's kind of a cool name. That is a cool name. They are located uh, just uh, north of Ashland, I believe. We talked about that earlier, towards uh, east of Cleveland. Here's Grosser again. He throws deep to the end zone on the left side. He's got a guy out there, and did he make the catch? He made the catch. Was his feet inbounds? The official was – it looked like the official was talking to someone over here. I don't – we're going to have to see that again on instant replay. Yeah, I'm not they're sure. They're saying no touchdown. Wow. Alex Sutherland was the receiver on that play. He has three receptions coming into the game. It this would be number four. Hard to see from yeah, our angle. Yeah. We're blocked, but it's close. Yeah, the receiver or the 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 official was right there on it. So, yeah, he was probably looking at the back judge, Zach Metzger, back there to uh, confirm whether he was in bounds or not. Grocer again throws to the end zone. It goes off the shoulder pads of number two, Tyler McCusack, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Clock continues to run. That'll bring up fourth and two from the six-yard line. So they can get a first down here uh, unless they do not get a touchdown here. So two yards. Man, that's a fearless play. You yeah, saw, absolutely. You saw Mercusic go up in the air after that football with three Grove defenders yeah. right, right in the area. Anytime you go across the middle. <laughs> You're probably going to take a hit. Take a and, big hit. Uh, he's still putting forth the effort. Love it. So it looks like Black River is going to take a timeout here as they have two left with 2.23 to go here. So we'll step aside, take a time out here in the booth. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Since the replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. Union Bank is our replay sponsor. So Black River trying to put it in the end zone here. Grocer throws deep to the left side. He's got a man out there, and he's got a touchdown. Who else? <laughs> Tyler McCusack scores the touchdown with 2.08 to go, and that makes it 42-16 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Really nice pass there as he throws it in the corner of the end zone. And I tell you, out. Grocer is is has shown himself to be an excellent quarterback tonight. Um, clearly, coaching staff saw something with Mark Cusick in this game. They have utilized him in a variety of different ways, and, and again, he continues to deliver. So with 2.08 to go, Grocer will try to tackle on the extra point, and that will stop the clock from running automatically. Snap is back, hold is good, and the kick is up, and it is good. So with 2.08 to go, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs lead 42 to 17. First round of the state playoffs right here at WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Hawker Drywall is our scoreboard sponsor. I wonder if he's related to, I wonder if Hawker Drywall is related to Shep, Shep Hawker. Hawker. I don't know. It's a good, good question to ask. Maybe hmm. we send our crack squad down to find out. Speaking of cracks, Hawker Drywall. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Boy, that was cheesy. Man. That was a dad joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh. In a 42 to 17 game, you come up <laughs> yeah. with all kinds of things to say. Yeah. My wife always asks me, "What do you guys talk about in, in, in you know big spread games?" And I'm like, uh, "Lots of things. Yeah. Lots of things. Lots of things." <laughs> Boy, this is a it's getting chilly out here. This is a fright or a far call, uh, Scott, from when you and I did uh, Shawnee Bath early in the year when oh. it was really nice and warm that night. We had shorts on and yes, t-shirts. It was and nice. <laughs> so with 202 to go, Columbus Grove Bulldogs will try to run this one out. Nice little baseball slide there. Black River has one timeout left, so uh, you got to imagine if they're going to use it. I, I don't know that they will use it here in a 42-17 game. And you saw Shep Hawker there on that return when he got up. He shook hands with a couple of the other players. I imagine 
you won't see those guys back into the game. No, that first team. Right, yeah. They came in because uh, typically on special teams, you don't have a lot of depth at position. Right. So you bring your first teamers back in to r run kick, off, kick returns, punt returns, et cetera. So here comes Hopkins as he's going to hand the ball off again to Josh Gannon. He'll be taken down very quickly. Clock continues to run. I'm sure That's they're going to let that 25-second uh, clock go off pretty quick here. Number 34 on the tackle, Blake Hopkins again. Blake Hopkins has been everywhere there. So. Black River's leading tackler. So Black River will end the year at 6-5. and five. A Disappointing loss for these young men, but uh, uh, six wins in a row before tonight, so a great finish to the season. When you're right, a lot of sophomores and juniors out there yes, playing yeah. their, their number one um, rusher, Blake Hopkins, their number one tackler, Blake Hopkins, junior. Junior. He'll be back. Absolutely. So a lot of these guys are coming back. and uh, A lot of skill position players are coming back. So, But i uh, got news for you. Columbus Grove's bringing a whole bunch of them back, too. Wow. They're, not, they're not done yet. <laughs> they're not done. So. I like the Grove uniforms. Uh, I, do, I, I do, yeah. I like the little double stripe down the leg. Sure. Haven't seen that for uh, for for forever. Here's Hopkins in the gun. He's got Gannon to his left. Hopkins is going to keep it himself. Clock continues to run at about 35, and I think this may be the last play here. I think he... Yeah, you see, the, you see, uh, Zach Metzger is going to take his time, wash the football off there, take yep. his time, setting it down. Play clock hadn't started, so uh, yes, so this that'll will do it. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs will advance to the second round of the Ohio High School State Football Playoffs with a convincing 42 to 17 win here on WSN. When we come back, we'll have our Stolly Hustle Player of the Game, and we'll get an interview with. Coach Schaefer for the dogs. You're watching High School Sports. Thank you listen. Back here at Columbus Grove High School with Coach Andy Schaefer. Coach, big first round win in the state playoffs. You got to be happy for you and your kids. Yeah, it was nice to come out and set a statement like that. You know, I, I was really worried about Black River. I mean, they're very dangerous on offense, and, and our defense just uh, stepped up to the challenge and, and shut them down. Yeah, they threw the ball a lot tonight, Coach, and I want to talk a little bit about your defensive backs. They had a fantastic game. Two pick six. You very, very rarely see one. They got two tonight. Yeah, you know, um, uh, they, they were the guys that we really talked about that's got to step up and, 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 and really play tonight, and they did. They, they had a heck of a game game and I just like the way our defense played and they complemented our offense and, and, and we were we were getting some big plays on both sides. So on to the next round coach you don't know who you play yet but what will you tell your kids about this game tonight I'm sure you'll enjoy the victory but it's back to work on Monday. Yeah I mean that's what the playoffs is you know you just enjoy it but uh, yeah it, we'll, we'll get back ready and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens I think it's Northwestern which uh, I mean that's a road trip for us but we said we'll play in Kansas it doesn't matter as long as we're playing next week so let's let's go. Well, congratulations coach. Let's bring our Stolly Hustle Award winner in here tonight. Who we got here, Scott Nurse? Landon Schrader. <laughs> Landon Schrader. What a great game for you, young man. Two touchdowns, a pick six, and you were all over the field. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's all I, – honestly, I thank you to the teammates. Push me and help me out. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, not only did you have those two plays, I thought you really played well. Both sides of the football all night long. Really uh, kind of a core member of that uh, defensive secondary, I thought did a great job tonight, really, for Columbus Grove. Thank you. Yeah, yeah which would, the last question before we let you go, because I want you to celebrate your teammates. Which would you rather do, offense or defense? Because you look like you enjoy both. Uh, it's, t it's a toss up. <laughs> I, I'm going to say defense. That's what I've played my whole life, so it's grown up to do it. Yeah, well, congratulations Thank on you. the uh, Stolly Hustle Award. Uh, yeah, pick six is nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So a big win for the Grove Bulldogs. They move on to round two right here on WSN. <laughs> <laughs>